All right, everybody, we're here again. Again, we're focusing on some attacks from the guard. Again, we're gonna focus on upper body control this time. And normally when we find upper body control, um, we're able to lock into their upper body in a very powerful way, their shoulder line, their head, their arms in some way, and attach ourselves right there. And once we attach ourselves there, then we again have a higher um, ability or a higher success rate with climbing closer to those upper body limbs with the rest of our body and then securing powerful controls, right? Where we can use our legs generally to squeeze the limbs of the upper body or the neck to do our submissions. Now, we're gonna have a look at this again in the closed guard. And again, like we've talked about, you're generally gonna find these controls if you can catch your opponent in a kneeling or crouching position where they're low and their upper body is physically close to you already. All right, if they're in the standing position, we have a completely different approach because it's got to do with gripping their legs. So we're gonna look at the closed guard position. And again, we're gonna enter our shoulder crunch or shoulder pin scenario from here, from the underhook, all right? And again, there's two ways that I can attach to the shoulder line in general, okay? I can move to them and find control of the shoulders or I can force him to move to me. We're gonna focus on forcing him to move to me. So we're just gonna, again, use a very, very basic setup, of starting to swim on the inside of his arms to remove his wrists from my body. And the moment his wrists are no longer posting in my body, I drive my knees to my chest and capture him all right, in this position where again, I've attached my body to his neck and his shoulder line, and now I'm gonna climb on him for the submission. This time we're gonna look at transitioning to a standard like belly down or rolling arm bar attack. What we're gonna do from here is again, always making sure the primary arm is supported by the secondary arm. We transition that secondary arm under the armpit and again back on top of the primary arm to keep that posture down. If we ever let this arm go at any time, he's gonna posture up again and we're gonna lose everything. So we keep pressure on that and now that we're ready, we circle the forearm onto the opposite side of his head and keep his face away. Remember, okay, this elbow on the outside is higher up to the ceiling so it's more difficult for him to remove his arm and the more we accidentally drop this arm, the more likely he's gonna be able to pull his arm out and free All right, and we're gonna be in a situation where we've lost our attacking options. Now, like before, we're gonna look at replacing our leg all right, sorry, replacing our arm control or the pressure with our arms on his upper body with our leg before we move towards the wrist. Remember, we're gonna start turning onto our side. Now the problem is, is when you move anywhere with from any control, you create a loss in tension. Now if I don't do a good enough job of maintaining tension as I move, again, you're gonna lose control. And as we lose control, he's gonna be able to remove himself from the situation. So I need to use my legs, all right, to replace my arm. So what I'm gonna do from here, again, it is possible for you to post on the mat, but generally you're gonna find if you're not super quick, he's gonna be able to remove the control because as you turn to your side, you're gonna start taking that pressure off him and he's gonna give you a difficult time. So what I want you to do instead is I want you to post with your knee kind of on his rib cage. And as I post on him instead of the mat, I'm gonna achieve the same thing. I'm gonna turn my hips out to that side, and but now I've got knee pressure, and this is the most important thing. I've got knee pressure on his back, and again, like we talked about, we're always looking for the primary leg being supported by the secondary leg. So the moment we get here and we're high on his back, I again shoot my knee as high as I can, and I support my top leg, keeping that knee rotated down by coming in front towards my toes rather than the back towards my heels, which again is open, opens my knee up generally and gives him the op opportunity to posture up a little bit. All right, I swap my legs in the correct way and now it's very difficult for him to come back towards me. Now, again, we've got a lot of attacking options here. We're trying to pinch, we're trying to attack, but we're gonna look at maybe we can't find the wrist. Maybe we just didn't have the power before in our arm crush or arm crush position. I can't finish. So I'm gonna reposition my hips. I'm gonna climb on him even further to enter a standard armbar position. The most important thing here is to make sure that he cannot bend his elbow and bring his wrist right back behind his elbow. Because if he does that, even as I rotate and turn, his wrist is now wedged against the mat and to straighten out his arm becomes very difficult. And even if we do land in the armbar with the arms connected, we have an even more difficult time of again going through our grip 
break, uh, breaking scenario, we're just going to get to a really clean finish. And the way we're going to get to a really clean finish is just to make sure that we control the thumb and the hand. And this is important. Because again, if we go too far underneath the wrist, he's going to be strong enough right, to bend his arm. If instead I control his thumb and hand, I'm actually going to attach it to my body. And now he's trying to pull his thumb and hand away from my chest. Now the problem with that is his hand and, and um, thumb is attached to my chest. He's trying to pull my chest back to him and it's not going to happen for him. It's impossible for him to bend his arm enough to defend initially. So now I'm going to lift my body in a position where I can swivel over the top of his shoulder. I circle my forearm and I lift up onto my elbow joint. And now that I'm up onto my elbow joint, I've got to lift my hips into position. One of the most common errors uh, here is we're a little bit lazy. We keep our right hip on the mat and try to throw the leg from here. Now there's two things. One, you generally can't clear his head properly. And two, you start to separate and put your legs in a weak position. If he drives into you, he does things like this, you're gonna to start to lose the position completely. All right, so it's super important from this clamped leg position, what I do is I lift my hip off the mat. And now it's just my right knee touching the ground. So he can't drive into me yet well enough to kill the position. Now I have to fix my top leg. The way I'm gonna fix my top leg is I slide my hip forward and I slide my knee past his ear, knee into the mat and my left shin, the shin on the back of his head stays there as tight as possible. And this is gonna help force him to roll. And as I force him to roll, I'm gonna land in a conventional armbar position, but with the arm already extended. Now I do have the possibility of finishing here straight away. Sometimes you don't have enough tension with your knees. So again, I just keep continually rolling to this side of my body. If I need any help at all, I can always use my arms to bring his legs across my hips. And now I fall into this scenario. The only thing that's left for me to do here is again, do a good job of pinching the shoulder, do a good job of controlling the wrist, circling my leg back over the face, and now lifting my hips up into his elbow to finish a very, very powerful arm bar submission. Oh,